all right youtube how you doing welcome back to the channel we got some friday night nba action today 11 games to jump into so i'm very excited to get into it guys we go through each and every game in this video i give you my lean i give you what i'm thinking and give you my thoughts on the game where my head is at on this game but all of my final plays i tell you guys every single video all my final plays what i'm actually going to be rolling with tonight will be in the pinned comment on this video so make sure to keep an eye on that we are recording this the night prior to you guys watching this so we don't have all of our final results from yesterday yet what we do have the only game that has turned in thus far is the dallas and brooklyn game that game went to ot dallas wins 129 to 125 and i feel like a genius in this one or maybe i just can consider myself a genius because i told you guys in the pin comment there we go perfect example as to why you keep an eye on the pin comment but we had brooklyn on the money line plus 135 right but what did i say is that we're taking brooklyn plus 135 but if at any point in the game dallas becomes underdogs when we're live looking at it and whatnot i'm gonna live bet dallas plus money on the money line so we can guarantee profit on the game which is exactly what we did Four minutes left in the first half dallas um i believe they went down to plus 125 in terms of money line we hammer that now we're looking at dallas plus 125 on the money line and brooklyn who we got pre-game plus 135 on the money line profit either way you do cut into your profit margin i guess but come on profits profit guaranteed making money on a game you can never lose sleep over that so we do end up picking up a quarter unit on that game it was either going to be 35 percent of a unit or a quarter of a unit dallas ends up winning that one eventually but we did execute that perfectly um but yeah no other games have come in so far but we did have our ride of the day in that game guys if you don't have the hashtag ride of the day is all you got to use is hashtag ride of the day in the comments and i'll be jumping on board with one person's play you guys get a shout out win or loss and unfortunately speaking of loss here dennis one of the ogs on the channel christian wood who i love this play christian wood's been on absolute fire does not go over 18 and a half points so if you lose you get the shout out you gotta face the womp up excuse me there um dennis knows the cheers and the applause you get when you win he's had plenty of wins in terms of ride of the days but there's the womp womp. Christian Wood goes under. That was an L that we catch. We do jump on board with one of you guys. So it's a big L for me. Just as big of it is for you guys dropping the ride of the day if you do lose. But make sure you just hashtag ride of the day in the comments. And guys, before we get into the video, I'm going to ask you guys to check out Sportsline. I've talked about it multiple times, right? Sportsline is an amazing place to start your sports betting research they simulate each game 10,000 times for all sports so you can start your sports prediction process off with some computer data driven knowledge and information they project the score they give you projected box scores they also have vegas experts on the site writing about the games as well and giving their picks so make sure to check out sportsline you can use promo code guy boston with the link in the description and you can get three months for four dollars 99 cents yeah less than five bucks for a quarter of the year that's a pretty damn good deal if you ask me but enough rambling about recaps or anything let's get into the games here guys we're already deep into this video i apologize for the delay but we got atlanta taking on detroit in this one atlanta six point favorites on the road a couple games in the slate tonight you'll notice as we go through our games that they just played or when i say that the two teams just played a couple nights prior this is one of them here october 26th so just a couple days ago atlanta catches the win against detroit but detroit does cover it was a seven and a half point line detroit keeps it to five towards the end of the game i do lean atlanta in this one i think that they're probably the better team more talented smarter team um three and one on the season that was the first time detroit covered in that game i do like how young and fun detroit can be to watch but i think atlanta is a better team they obviously have the superstar i think they probably learn a little bit from that previous game and they can go out there and win this game probably by eight points or so um no major injuries to note in this one either so i'm gonna lean atlanta minus six in this one i will say the total 227 and a half too close for comfort to me i think that this game probably goes similar to what it was last game which is 118 to 113 that's pretty damn close so uh that does end up going over it was a 229 last game so obviously these two teams can score the ball or you know not prevent um <laughs> others from scoring as their defense isn't all that great um detroit's defense is 25th in the league and atlanta's is 13th so top half but still nothing remarkable i would probably lean over but that's a pretty big number so i'm sticking away from the total but i do lean atlanta minus six keep an eye on the pin comment to see if it becomes a final play 
Next game, we got Orlando, three-point dogs at home hosting Charlotte. You know what we've been doing with these Charlotte games as of late. We're going right to the injury report. And Terry Rozier still downgraded to doubtful. Cody Martin downgraded to doubtful. And LaMelo Ball still out indefinitely with that ankle injury. He's yet to play this year. In terms of Orlando, Mo Wagner, Cole Anthony, and Suggs all downgraded to out. Cole Anthony left last game, and he's out this game. That's obviously a huge blow to the Magic. I, I mean, we already won money on Charlotte this year. I like this Charlotte team, even without Terry Rozier, LaMelo Ball. Um, they still have pieces that can play some damn good basketball. They're 3-1 and one against the spread this season. I'm going to lean Charlotte. I would love this play, but I don't love this play. I know that doesn't make sense, but what I usually like betting Charlotte is like what they've had in the past couple games. 10-point dogs to Atlanta. Boom, hammered. 7.5-point um, dogs to New York. Hammer them. You know what I mean? But I don't love them being road favorites. So I do like Charlotte. I do lean Charlotte in this one. But something that's keeping me off of it is that this is a different situation that we would be betting Charlotte than we have in games past. This is not my typical let's hammer Charlotte type of situation. So we might be staying off of this one. I'll say it again. Keep an eye on the damn pinned comment, guys. And hit that subscribe button while you are down there. It's free to do and helps out the channel a ton. So if you can find it in your kind hearts to hit that subscribe button, please make sure to go ahead and do so also like this video but let's keep it moving we got cleveland taking on my boston celtics celtics five and a half point favorites over our total is 220 here um i like the celtics i think they're one of the best teams in the league and they're gonna be hungry coming off of that loss to chicago um cleveland coming off of three straight wins chicago washington and orlando i don't think washington is all that tremendous i don't think orlando's all that tremendous cleveland probably is feeling themselves a little bit too much here whereas boston's gonna have a little dog in them so i'm gonna go boston here minus five and a half in terms of a total i guess i would lean Five of the last time, five of the last six times these two teams played, and then five of the last seven games for Boston has gone under. But I will say that line 220 is very appetizing for an over. So we're sticking away from this. Stats would say go under, but that 220, I mean, in today's NBA, that can get shot out of a cannon so easily. So we're probably sticking away from the total in this one, if I'm being honest. Next up, we got Washington taking on Indiana. These two teams played at the beginning of the year. Um, and it was a decent decently close game Washington pulls away towards the end um they were two and a half point favorites here and they end up do covering um but this is going to be the first dog that we're going to lean this video Indiana plus six I don't love them on the road they're only one in four straight up and against the spread Washington looks pretty good um even with Bradley Beal when he's lacking at times he did get hurt last game he's probable so he's probably going to play in this game um Delon Wright who we had as a major play um needed five and a half points from him last game and he got injured at the beginning of the fourth with five points so that was probably gonna cash it ends up not but this Washington team has looked pretty good I just think that you know if Bradley Beal's banged up these two teams have already seen each other six points may be a lot to give the Pacers now I don't think the Pacers are anything special don't get me wrong here this is probably not a final play but I just can't see myself laying six to a team like Washington I don't think that they are um the type of team that you know you can say okay you know what Let's go out there and just be like, uh, let's let's be confident in them, right? They're not a team that I can be confident in just yet here. Um, decent defense. They've been playing good defense here. They rank in the top 10 for uh, score, field goal percentage, and three-point percent against. So that is great. But this Indiana offense actually has a decent offense. Seventh in the league in terms of total score this year. Um, so we're going to lean Indiana plus six. I don't think that becomes a final play. Next up, we got the Raptors taking on the Sixers in this one. Another game that these two teams just played a couple nights ago. And man, oh man, I don't know what to do with this Sixers team. I keep laying down and saying, you know what? This is the game that they bounce back. This is the game where they look good. <sighs> What's going to happen here? This, this Sixers team has not looked that great. Their only win of the year was against Indiana, who I just got finished saying, I don't think is anything special. You know what I mean? But we're going to be crazy. And the fact that we're sounding the psycho alarm here for a Philly team right now is crazy. But we're going to lean Sixers here plus one. I do think that, you know, no, there's no injuries there. Otto Porter Jr. still out um, for Toronto. I think Scotty Barnes has been banged up, but he's good to go. Um, but Philly, you know what? I think that they get embarrassed by Toronto last game. They end up losing by 10, and they were, I think, one-point favorites in that game, right? So they end up losing that game. I think they got to at some point say, you know what? 
let's do the damn thing and all we're asking for is a win here this is a good example of one that we could potentially see that live in-game money line play here because this is probably going to close with the uh the sixers being around plus 110 favorites right if they get off to an early lead or anything like that we could see toronto move up to a plus 110 favorite and though it's very minimal profit we might be able to pull the trigger on that so keep an eye on the pin comment to see if we go with that strategy but i think philly plus one has a strong chance to be a final play i think i'm gonna be crazy and crazy and crazy until they do all of a sudden decide to say hey you know what? let's win a decent game in toronto four and one against the spread they're playing good basketball but i do think that the sixers team has what it takes to overpower them to some degree so i'm gonna go sixers here plus one next up we got the los angeles losers excuse me <clears throat> i have some acid reflux los angeles lakers my b los angeles lakers taking on the minnesota timberwolves timberwolves three and two on this season two and three against the spread and then the lakers talk about a womp womp i don't even have to say their record the womp womp does it for them the lakers oh and four straight up and against the spread minnesota eight and a half point favorites in this game last time these two teams played was back in march last year minnesota beat them by 20 points um which is pretty impressive this lakers team has just looked terrible i don't really understand why a lebron james and anthony davis team cannot get it done you can't just blame Re uh, westbrook right i don't even think he played last game um he is questionable so is anthony davis here from minnesota no major injuries to note i guess i lean minnesota because we're facing uh fading the lakers as of late but eight and a half points is a lot to lay instead i probably end up peaking and this is gonna sound crazy so i don't know if we pull the trigger but i think i end up peaking at the under in this game right now it's sitting at 227 we end up peaking at the under here because i don't know if this lakers team can carry their own weight in terms of uh that score so in terms of points scored this season 109 97 104 and 99 they've only hit over 100 points in 50 percent of their game now can the minnesota Timberwolves carry the weight yeah that's why it makes it a lean but i might be looking at the under versus a side on in this game um let's move on to the second half of these games we got the knicks taking on the bucks which i think is going to be a very good game milwaukee three and zero against the spread and three and zero straight up and this team has looked pretty damn good in terms of the uh the lines that they've had to cover as well it's pretty impressive um they've had to cover lines of well they played philly plus four so forget that one but then they had to go up there against houston 13 and a half and then playing a good brooklyn team who you know they haven't looked all that special they have to cover three points against them now before you're like oh three points isn't that much in your second game of the year you're facing Kyrie, kevin durant ben simmons and you have to go out there and cover that and then they win it by 11 points this bucks team looks damn good um so we're gonna lean bucks here uh, i think six points is definitely doable i might actually end up buying a half point or trying to odd shop this one to find a five and a half line because i do think that six that flat number just gives me some bad vibes i think this knicks team can control a game and control the pace of a game good enough to keep it close but i think that milwaukee is able to have a late pull away here um towards the end of the uh the end of the game but also i want to say these are two teams that we've looked at their team totals this year and been pretty good on i know we had the knicks team total just a couple nights ago more recently but um keep an eye on the pin comment for any team total plays in this one and player props as well all player props are added in to the pin comment with an explanation every single day so we lean milwaukee or minus six um we got the spurs hosting the bulls spurs five point uh, dogs at home they started the season pretty well right the spurs were looking good they're cooking with fire um and they end up you know beating minnesota but then losing to minnesota by a decent amount of points i think that the spurs are going to start to cool off they were pretty hot um cell is questionable here in terms of chicago zach levine is questionable as well but i think that this number is super doable even with the bulls on the road so we're gonna go minus five in this game as our lean bulls three one and one against the spread um three and two straight up the the spurs share that record both straight up and against spread but we're gonna go bulls minus five in this one total i'm looking at the under 229 in this game we cashed our last bulls under it was against the pacers there um but in terms of the last two games for the bulls here they both have gone under and san antonio two out of the last three games have kept under so this is a fairly high number we take a peek at it um so we're gonna look at the under there i'm gonna see what the model does keep an eye on the pinned comment guys um if that's a final play we only got a few more games in the video when we have big slates like this man i love it 
I don't know if you guys get bored hearing this stupid ass voice talking all video long, but I love these long ones because we can dive into each and every game. Um, but hopefully you guys are still sticking around. If you are, hit the like button on this video. And if you are watching at this point, drop a wazative in the chat. W-O-Z-Z-A-T-I-V. You know the word. A long time ago, I accidentally messed up and said wazative instead of positive because I mixed positive and winning. And all of a sudden, wazative became a thing. So drop a wazative in the comments if you are still watching at this point. Appreciate you guys and love you guys if you are. But uh, let's move on here. We got the Nuggets, eight and a half point favorites against Utah. These teams played, uh, was it opening night for them? Let's scroll back here. Yeah, and we were so right about that one. Similar line, it closed at plus seven. Utah, we had that win a um, couple nights ago here. But I think that this game is another one that may stick fairly close to that um caldwell pope and michael porter jr questionable as of right now for the nuggets i think that eight and a half points is a decent amount to give this jazz team who are four and one on the year now they've played the rockets twice they've played the pelicans minnesota denver so you know they have a mix of good and bad in their schedule playing the rockets twice obviously they get a loss and a win there in fact that's their only loss of the year against the rockets but i think i lean utah plus eight and a half i think that that's just a big number to drop if you're the nuggets who are two and three against the spread the season Speaking of the Rockets, we got them five-point dogs against the Trailblazers. Trailblazers, four and one. We finally were right in picking against them. We had the Heat, um, the Heat minus two and a half against the Trailblazers a couple nights ago. We were on the right side of that one. But Trailblazers, I think that, you know, obviously they come into this season. No one really thinks much of them. They're one of the worst teams, if not the worst team last year, right? Rockets still in that board. I think the five points is a decent amount to lay. But I think that this line would resemble like a Trailblazers team of last year. Not the Trailblazers that we've seen this year. They got their first uh, loss of the year. So I think that they're going to come out of this one and kind of fire and get ready to go. Also, I'm going to look at the over in this one. 227. Uh, the over is hitting eight of Houston's last 12 games they don't play much defense i think that this is the type of scoring game that you know it's not because these two teams can drop in the rock it's because these two teams are not going to play that great of defense portland started off as a top five defense this season and they've slowly started to backtrack in the last couple of games overall still playing good defense but as of late not the most uh you know defensive efficient team so this is more of a houston play for me i think portland takes this win and drops a lot of points because i don't think houston has a good defense whatsoever but i do like the over in this one 227 um, all right, last game on the slate. We got the Sun six-point favorites at home against the Pelicans. Pelicans three and one, even when they were very thin. No Brandon Ingram, no Zion. They still get that win against the Mavericks. We're on the wrong side of that one, but Brandon Ingram is still out. Zion's questionable. Lewis is questionable, and so is Herb Jones. Questionable here. We're going to want to see what's going on with those guys. Jay Crowder is still, I think he's, is he in like a contract holdout or something like that? Something going on there, right? Um, in terms of him being out indefinitely, but we obviously want to see where this shapes up, I think, in terms of injuries or who's in and who's out for the Pelicans. But either way, I think I'm going to be looking at Phoenix. This Phoenix team impressed me the other night against Golden State. They looked very good. We were on the Golden State side of things, and Golden State ends up losing by almost 30 points. Almost 30 points. So this Phoenix team impressed me. Devin Booker looks like an absolute bucket, but like what else is new? But he looks even better than he has before. I'm going to go Phoenix here, minus six. And that is going to wrap it up, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Appreciate you guys if you are still watching this all the way until the end guys pick up some fade me merch we get the fade me caesars tea here uh make sure to check it out guybossonsports.com slash store cannot thank you guys enough for all the support as of late i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out